I'm not a completely normal white looking woman. So you and I going out and doing something, you would get treated normal, I don't. So me saying I don't go out thinking about my race, I go out thinking I'm a tattooed woman that's gonna get discri discriminated against. She's literally the whitest person on the planet. So you can't put me in the same boat as, hey, when you, you go out, do you think of yourself as a white woman? No, I don't. I don't get the same treatment as a normal white person does. I get discriminated against just as much as a minority does. That's why I said I can't use the, hey, I'm a minority card because I'm not clearly a minority, but I am. But they would say, well, you- What? What is going on? <laughs> what the fuck? It's so good. Dude, come on. You gotta- I love takes like this. You know, I'm, I'm seeing takes all the time. Okay. And, and sometimes- Life throws a fastball at you, okay? And this is, you gotta appreciate it. I love that. That's cool. That's creative. Chef's kiss. It's crazy. Yeah, being black is like, you know, getting a tattoo in a non-conventional place, which of course you can laser off. It's just like that. Discrimination against body mods definitely exists, but this take is so fucking insane. Yeah, because it's also self-induced. Like, you're not getting body mods because you want to be the same as everybody else. You're getting them because you want to be different. It's like part of your expression. You're literally paying to express yourself so you look different than other people. It's your choice. If I go into a store, I get treated the same way as let's say a black person does. I don't- Yo! Let's go! That's awesome. I want- I want more. I want her to say it's actually worse for her. No, peak brain rot isn't this. Peak brain rot? is when she says she has it worse than black people because like at least there are advocacy groups for black people i don't get greeted i get looked at like i'm shoplifting the same exact situation i can dude i love that yeah black people's oppression starts and ends at uh, uh inconvenient being inconvenienced at the at the store and uh there aren't like uh you know systemic consequences so i don't get the white person treatment civil rights act of 1964 doesn't protect the 20 percent of white american adults with tattoos sussy, 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 sussy. <laughs> What do I always say? There's nothing more white than like seeking oppression that you do not have. Okay. It is like the quintessential white trait is just being like, I'm so incredibly oppressed, dude. You have no idea. Oh, this guy. Do I think it's beneficial for me to be white if I got any? Let me tell you something. This dude's going to be racist as f Okay. Let's hear what he has to say. What kind of Italian shit he's going to pull off here? Do I think it's beneficial for me to be white if I gotten any privileges like that? I would say no, just plain and simple no. Um, I think that, you know, with civil rights and everything, I think a lot of times that um, other minorities sometimes get more benefits than I would as being a white person. Has. For some reason, some black people kind of hold on to the, uh, back in the day, the slave thing. Yeah, or... come on, this slave thing, come on. It's only a hundred, come on, come on. We only and try to maintain an unequal system of subjugation through our At criminal same, justice system for another fucking hundred years after slavery is abolished. Come on! And then we still have remnants of that same kind of uh, white supremacist attitude tr hidden in our criminal justice system where it's totally legal to keep maintaining slavery. Come on! Sentencing disparity is not a big deal. The slave thing. What are you doing? They feel they're not being treated right. Should slavery be something that because it happened we owe black people something more yes the answer is yes straight up reparations yes absolutely not i his cord like i said it had nothing to do with me it had nothing to do with black people living today maybe their great 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 grandmother went through it <clears throat> someone they never met it's in the past there's been injustices done forever in human existence and uh it, it's just something that yeah exactly and you know the attitude should never be, ah, get over it. <laughs> I think it's hard to talk about race as a white person because I feel like maybe sometimes black people are just looking for a reason to tell you why you're wrong or tell you why you owe them something. If I was in a room full of white people, I would not feel uncomfortable talking about race. But if there were other minority... I mean, dude, the, the, the world was awaiting his contribution to the race conversation. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, man, I'm so, I'm so sad that like the, the barrier to hearing what Jason has to say about black people is, is, uh, somehow, uh, you know, the repercussions of, of people immediately telling him that he's a racist piece of shit. We would be so much more knowledgeable. It's that 
fucking meme of like the future uh, future where it's like society of jason was able to freely talk about race and it's just flying cars everywhere he's in that room i might think a little bit different and I might be a little bit more careful opening my mouth to not offend anyone or to potentially get in an argument or a heated debate. Yes. I don't even need to hear anything from Ronald. This man, this man is going to have some good takes. Okay. I mean, I just, I already know. I don't know any people that aren't proud of that they're white, you know, not in my social group. You know, most guys in my social group, they don't say they're, uh, Italian or Polish, they might be from a Polish or Italian or Irish background, but they they know they're white and they kind of, you know, just portray themselves as white people, you know. Owning a, a, a bar, I'm involved with 25 to 40 different people every day. We have these discussions, especially after a few cocktails, <laughs> you know, you really get into talking a and a lot of it might be baloney, but we, still, now. you know, a lot Maybe of things chapters. come out in the open and I thought, well, maybe I should go down there and speak up. I think affirmative action was nice. It had its time. I think the time is over with. We're going to keep this up for another 150 years? Oh, you know, we got to have so many Asians in, in the fire department. We got to have so many blacks in the fire department. We got to have so many Latinos. The white guys will never have a chance to be a fireman or a cop anymore. We had that problem. Here. I'm always saying these things. I'm always thinking to myself, like, white people happy. White people steady getting robbed of the opportunities they have. Can you imagine instead of 90%, instead of, I mean, at first it was 100%, then they took that away from us. Then it became 90%, they took that away from us. Now it's a whopping 70%. I mean, God damn it. 70%. Golly. I mean, the horror. When will they stop oppressing white people? Before he goes to sleep at night, he lies still awake thinking about Asian firefighters. Also, what, like, does he think that, like, Asian people can't fight fires like white people can? Like, this motherfucker needs to watch that YouTube video of the Japanese firefighters and how sick they are. Like, actually goaded. <laughs> Come on! I mean, Asian people are taking our firefighting jobs. Name one Asian firefighter. I'll wait. Uh, I don't know. Literally every firefighter in the asian continent do you think that there aren't do you think that there are just no firefighters in in you know asian countries what the fuck oh jesus christ here in buffalo affirmative action where they they had to hire so many i, mean, I can name one white firefighter his name is marat biker so blacks on the fire department and the police department so they were they were being hired over white males you know so what happens the white males took it to court and finally the new york state supreme court ruled that hey these guys scored better they did better on the, the agility test the mental test you know for sure the whole thing they should have been given the jobs but you gave it to minorities instead and they won their case a lot of uh, minorities should understand that a lot of white boys aren't going to be pushed around, you know. It seems that the younger generation of white males... I was right. This man did deliver. I knew Ronald was going to have no McDonald's ass takes, okay? I knew my man Ronald was going to pop the f*** off, and he certainly did, okay? Those are a little bit more fearful of minorities you know they don't want to step on anybody's toes everything has to be politically correct i wasn't raised that way thank god 26 percent of white americans say the successes minorities achieve in business and education are perceived as being due to racial preferences that's actually whoa that's actually pretty low that's like wow it's like surprisingly low i mean ronald was an exception he's like exceptional as a human um, I do feel as if people have preconceived notions about me being a blonde, cliche-looking white girl. I live with an African-American. We do the same things. We live the same life. But I guess inherently there's never going to be a time where a person with lighter skin completely understands what a person with darker skin might go through on a daily basis whether it be as small as hold on like they were being glared at by somebody on the bus or whether or not it was an ignorant comment that some stranger that they met might have said to them on the side um Howdy. if that never happens 
to the other half of that couple, maybe there is always going to be a little bit of a boundary between what white people and African-American people can understand about each other. A lot of overcorrected white people think like you should always say African-American, like not black. I mean, it stems from just never being around black people. I mean, ironically, also, a lot of these people think all black people are African-American. They call all black people African-Americans, which is pretty funny. Ratio. Remember that one chatter being like, hey, uh, how many African-Americans are in Turkey? <laughs> the cha I will never forget the chatter who said, how many African-Americans are in Turkey? It was awesome. I don't see any myself personally of a race problem. I see a responsibility problem with when you don't support your own ethnicity from within your own communities, then you can't grow successful anyplace else. So I see that in the black community, that they do not support each other. And when there's a problem, it's always somebody else's fault. Typical. They'll say, well. Typical white guy take, straight up. Systemic issues are not at play here. Slavery, Jim Crow laws, the destruction of reconstruction. Um, none of that plays a role here. It's just, uh, you know, people are just selfish and stupid. They don't understand it. There's just a responsibility problem. The white guy still holds all the cards. No. Almost two months, Pog. It ain't the white guy. It ain't the black guy. Spanish guy. What? There's a lot of people holding a good hand in this country. It's what you do with it that counts. You can't point at the white guy anymore and go, hey, you're the one who's holding me back for 200 years. It's impossible. Three months. Unless I've you hold yourself back. I've been following for a while, but only so sub when I get a gift. That's the way I look at it. Everybody's an individual to me. Incredible. I think they see me as a white person, um, as a married person, and as a, a short, hairy person. <laughs> anyway, that's overweight. I've been involved in several lawsuits against police departments and municipalities for... Um, unlawfully uh, arresting uh, African-American male. I purposely try to uh, defend people that are in those kind of situations. Oh, shit. I'm not a racist or a bigot. Um, and that I think it's, it is very hurtful if, if someone assumes right. that of me just because I'm white or just, or because uh, I could be in favor of a policy that is, um, say, uh, de facto racist. I'm, I'm pro-life when I see people uh, Addressing the issue of the bad things that happened to happen. Bro, come on. Don't say, okay, white savior. The dude's out here literally suing police departments at, at the behest of, like, uh, wrongful, uh, like, black people being wrongfully arrested. I'm, I'm pro-life, and I think it's rather upsetting when, when I see people uh, addressing the issue of the bad things that happen to African Americans in okay. society. When, in, in my mind, there's nothing worse than, um, in the context of race, five, 500,000 black wrong i was wrong he's just doing the fucking, you know the abortion industry is just murdering babies or whatever by way of abortion children dying every year god damn it bro come on there's got to be like one fucking dude in here who's like good how come how can dudes start off by, by being like i'm literally a fucking, you know a public defender uh, doing pro bono work defending uh black people that have been been victim to police brutality and then turn around and be like also affirmative action is literally should be a crime like how how does it start off one way and then literally <laughs> wait did i misunderstand was he saying he's in favor of the cops like he was he wasn't suing police departments he was actually suing the black people that are arrested for not being <laughs> arrested well enough <laughs> The municipalities. I've been involved in several lawsuits against police departments and municipalities for um, unlawfully uh, arresting uh, African American male. I wait. He's a cop. Oh my God. He's a. Oh, he's been sued. He's been. Oh, what the fuck? Oh my God. Okay, he was not even. What? Whites might be hesitant to express their opinions about being proud to be white because one of the first things that comes to mind is white power when it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, I'm proud. Oh, to no, be it white. does. That's what it means. White, but I don't think that anybody should be not proud because they're not white. 
I think everybody should be proud of whatever they are. I think it would be wonderful if we could have a universal white culture. What does that mean? What does that mean? Uh, you're, you're proud to be white. What does white mean? I have to go over this again. Whiteness is not just about your skin complexion. I mean, white as like the way that colloquially we understand it can mean Caucasian, skin complexion, all that good stuff, right? But whiteness as a political concept is built around what it's not. Whiteness as a political concept implies power, okay? Whiteness as a concept was carefully curated by its proximity to blackness, i.e. the one drop rule. So when people say, white power or white pride, they are saying they are proud of being a part of the ruling class. They are proud of being a part of the group that has the hegemonic dominant power. When they see white culture, shit like that, that's precisely what they're talking about, whether they realize it or not. Oh, I this one. experienced a whole lot of the world and not a lot of adverse situations outside of any, you know, common household trials. I really don't have a lot of black friends, but I do have a lot of gay friends, and that's kind of a similar construct. And when I first started hanging out with them, yeah, I would be conscious of if I ever said the word gay. And sometimes it would slip out and I'd be like, oh my gosh, are they gonna be mad? And the same thing can be said for any type of- So wait, then is it okay not to be proud to be black or Mexican or any POC? There's a difference between saying you're proud to be black versus proud to be Mexican. Like you can have Irish pride, okay? No one's gonna bat an eye at that. Okay, you can have Italian pride. But when you say you have white pride, you're talking about whiteness as a political group, okay? But you can say, I'm, I'm proud to be Irish. I love being Irish. Right. The reason why it's not comparable to black pride, the black cultural identity was formed as a consequence of slavery. Formed because black people were ripped away from their uh, backgrounds, their cultures, their homes, their language, stripped of their identity, and had to come up and create uh, a, a shared identity within that struggle. Of, of being victims to colonial violence, being victims to chatter slavery. That's where that comes from. And yes, by the way, uh, the, the concept of white pride also is a reactionary concept that was created in the aftermath of black pride to begin with. It's the all lives matter to black lives matter. We all know what that is. I really don't have a lot of black friends, but I do have a lot of gay friends. And that's kind of a similar construct. And when I first started hanging out with them, I would be conscious of if I ever said the word gay. And sometimes it would slip out and I'd be like, oh my gosh, are they going to be mad? The same thing can be said for any type of, like, Complexion fried chicken. My skin. Kool-Aid. I mean, come on. Like, you can't even talk about fried chicken or Kool-Aid without wondering if somebody's going to get offended. Ugh, it's always like walking on eggshells, isn't it? Bro, she just dropped it. She just dropped that, like... Why is that the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of black people, dude? Holy shit. Like, how? How? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Someone says she has racist gums. Green heart. I don't know. Green heart. Green heart has high. You don't know just where the line is. 30% millennial Americans did not grow up in families that talked about race. Of course. And the 30% that did, you don't want them talking about race. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? 